Hi, this is Mrs. Slater, and we're going to talk about uh, arcs of circles today in section 10.3. The objectives are to understand different types of arcs, find the measure of arcs, and understand the relationship between congruent arcs, chords, and central angles. Okay, so first we want to learn about the central angle. It is an angle whose vertex is at the center, or from the center of the circle, who is vertex there. And then you can create two radii are going to be the sides, so that's your central angle. And then a central angle is always equal to an intercepted arc, or the intercepted arc. Okay, and right here is its intercepted arc. So those two measures will always be the same. The next one is a semicircle. It is an arc whose endpoints are the endpoints of the diameter. So once again, we need a center of our circle and a segment is going to go through it, so it would look something like this. So there's your diameter. So the semicircle itself is going to be here. Okay? And as you've already uh, guessed or already know, the semicircle will always equal 180 degrees. And then also, it's very important on how you recognize whether it's a semicircle versus a minor or mi major arc that we're going to talk about in a second. Um, you are going to distinguish between, the diff between them with three letters. So, for example, the endpoints of the diameter, let's say that they are points A and points, I'm sorry, points B and A, and then there's some random point anywhere in the semicircle that will help us determine that this is a semicircle. So always three letters. AXB is one way that you can write a semicircle with an arc over the top. Or you can go in the reverse order. BXA will also be an appropriate name for the semicircle. Next are the minor arcs. And in a minor arc, it is points whose, are on, whose points are on or between the sides of a central angle. So in your circle, uh, your central angle you can put anywhere, but I'm going to choose to put mine there. So there's my central angle because it's coming from the center. And the minor arc is going to be this one. So label that uh, with an A and a B again. We'll have circle O. So the minor arc is going to be with two letters this time. And those two letters could be AB and, I'm sorry, or BA. Again, two letters, capital letters. That's going to be for a minor arc. This also is smaller than a semicircle, so the measure is going to be between 0 and 180 degrees. Okay, and the last of the arcs is the major arc. Okay, we got points on or outside the central angle. So here is your central angle. Let me start over. Got to start with the center point and then draw a central angle, something like this. And we'll do something different, MT with O as the circle. The major arc is going to be from M to T, but the larger of the two. And once again, just like the semicircle, we're going to put a random point in the middle to help us distinguish between a, a semicircle, a major arc, and a minor arc. So in this particular example, we can say, Matt is a major arc. We could also say Tam is a major arc. So it could be either one of those. And any other points that you would have between M and T, you can use those as well. Um, and then this one is larger than a semicircle, so its measure is going to be between 180 and 360. Now, for the next one, uh, the next slide, I'm going to um, ask that you pause, see if you can identify all of them using radius, diameter, chord, semicircle, minor arc, and so on. Okay? So go ahead and push pause, see if you can figure them out, and then when you push play again, the answers will appear. The first one is chord. Second one is minor arc. The next one is major arc. Central angle, radius, diameter, semicircle, C 
central angle, major arc, and the last one, inscribed angle, bringing back a little bit of review there. Don't want you to get that mixed up with central angle. Okay, and then with our definitions and theorems, the first one that I need you to know um, in order to do everything in this section is if incongruent circles, which is what we have here, two arcs are congruent if they have the same measure. Okay, so if you have two arcs, M, A, T, and H. So if they have the exact same arc, okay, so we would be given that M, A, is congru or MA is let's say 60 degrees and TH is also 60 degrees. So because we are given that circle O is congruent to circle P, we can conclude that since they are congruent circles, we can say that MA, arc MA, is going to be congruent to arc TH. Uh, very similar on uh, one triangle. So this would be for the same circle. If you have two arcs on the same circle, like JA and CK, and it's given that we have circle O, and that JA is going to be, uh, let's say, 30 degrees, and CK is going to be 30 degrees as well. So what we can conclude, since they, have, uh, since they are congruent, they're going to have the same measure. So JA is going to be congruent to CK. In congruent arcs, or concentric circles, uh, there is a, uh, I want you to recognize the difference between measures and lengths here. So for example, if the central angle is 120, we know that the intercepted arc will also be 120, and so will this intercepted arc. Okay, so if you put letters A, B, C, D, and E for each one of those intersection points, I just wanted to make sure you knew the difference between uh, arc, the measure of the arc is going to be congruent to the measure of arc BD, but not necessarily the lengths. The lengths of AF um, and the lengths of AF and BF are not necessarily congruent. So I just wanted you to be careful with that. Okay, and then the next theorem that I want you to know is uh, there's about five or six theorems that this sums everything up. If they're congruent chords, you've got congruent arcs, and then you've got congruent angles. And these three pictures uh, you're going to be seeing in the next few examples. Okay, so example one. How do we find out what X is? Okay, based off of the last theorem, we know that congruent chords are going to create congruent central angles. So keep that in mind when you look at uh, the congruent chords here. And so if those are congruent, that means this one and this angle are going to be exactly the same. Therefore, x is going to equal 70 degrees. Number two, you have a 70 degree angle. And because congruent arcs, I'm sorry, congruent chords, then congruent arcs, we will be able to say that this arc is congruent to this arc, which is congruent to this arc. So if that's the case, we know the entire circle is 360 degrees. 360 minus the 70 that's given gives us an answer of 290. And since there are three congruent parts left, we can take 290 and divide it by 3, and we'll be able to figure out what K is. And K is 2, I'm sorry, 96 and 2 thirds for the answer. Number three. We also know that central angles are equal to, or congruent, to intercepted arcs. So this one goes pretty fast because if this is 160, that means the central angle is going to be the exact same thing as the intercepted arc. So S is going to equal 160 also. 
the next one, congruent chords create congruent arcs. So that means this side, or this arc, is going to be 130. Okay, if we know that, and we also know a full circle is 360 degrees, take 360 minus the 130, the 130 and the 20 for an answer of 80. So that means that this is going to be 80 degrees. And we know that intercepted arcs equal central angles. So y is going to be 80 degrees. Number five, AB is congruent to CD. So I'm going to show that by putting in little marks like so. And if we know uh, from 10.2, if we have congruent chords, we know that the distance, or they are equ equidistant from the center. So we know that's going to be congruent to each other. And they say in the directions that 8 centimeters is here. So therefore, that is going to be the answer to the question. OQ is congruent or equal to 8. Number 6 is a semicircle because they told us this was a diameter. And all semicircles are 180 degrees, which leaves this to be 70 degrees. And if that's 70 degrees, we know central angles and intercepted arcs are going to be equal to each other. So 2x is equal to 70. Therefore, x is going to be equal to 35. And then finally, number 7, um, the radii are congruent. PA is congruent to PB. And if sides, then angles. So this also, that's going to be 25. And if you have any um, uh, isosceles triangle, then we know we can just take 180 to minus the 50 or minus the 25. So you can, oops, just so you can see where I get the information from, minus 25, and then that's going to equal 130 degrees. So I'm going to put that as my central angle. And if my central angle is 130, that means AB is going to be 130 degrees. Um, and then circle is going to be 360 degrees, minus the 130 that we just found, minus the 65, leaves me with 130 no, it doesn't. It leaves me with 165 degrees left over. Now, 165 have to be divided equally because we know if congruent chords, then congruent arcs. So these two are exactly the same, which, le which just means we have to divide 165 divided by 2 to get 182.5. All right, so that is going to be part of our answer. So let's look back at what we have to find. A, B, we already put in our picture. 130 degrees. The other two are congruent arcs. So BD and AC are going to equal the same thing, which is 82.5. And this is the conclusion of section 10.3.